Assignment. Submitted work. As a teacher, you can have your learners submit work through your Moodle course. This saves on paper and it's better than email because when they submit, you'll see a list of your class only on your Moodle course, not cluttered up with emails from colleagues and organisations. What they submit can be uploaded files or text written directly on Moodle. Or, as we see if we look at this example of an assignment, because you can type your instructions into Moodle's text editor, it doesn't only have to be text. You can add links, images or videos relevant to your assignment. An assignment may be for one individual or it may be for a group and as a teacher you can choose whether or not to see the identities of your learners as you're grading it. With the Atto editor, teachers and students can directly record audio or video. Here the teacher is recording an example video for the students to follow. So if you want to add an assignment we need to turn the editing on from the link in the gear menu and then in the section where we want to add the assignment we click the link add an activity or resource to bring up Moodle's activity chooser. Assignment is first on the list and we can either click it once to read the explanation about an assignment with some examples for using it and then click the add button at the bottom or we can simply click the radio button twice. This then takes us to the assignment setup screen. Because assignment is so powerful, it has many different options. We're only going to look at a few in this video. The name is important because this is what the learners will see on the course page. And then in description you add what you want them to do for the assignment. If you want to include images, media, links, you click the appropriate icons. I'm just going to write a short description of what they must do. And if you want to display these instructions on the course page, you tick the box. You can also upload additional support documents for them if needed. You can then choose when you want them to send in their work, with due dates or a cut-off date, and you can also set yourself a reminder when to grade by. The due date will display on the course overview for learners, and the reminder to grade by will display on the course overview for you. What's important next is to decide your submission type. In other words, if you want them to upload one or several files, you make sure that file submission is ticked and you can choose the number of files you want and you can specify one or more types of files you want them to upload. If you want them merely to type an essay using Moodle's text editor, you select online text and you can also get Moodle to set them a word limit. Once you've done this, we can actually scroll down and save it and return to course and we're ready to go. But it is worth exploring some of the other options. Click the question mark help icon against any if you need more information. For instance, in feedback types, setting comment in line will allow you to type directly on the learner's work just as you would when grading on paper. In submission settings, you can decide if you want them to accept an agreement that their work is their own. In group submission settings, you can get them to work and submit as a group. And in notifications, we can choose whether or not to be messaged when students submit and also whether or not by default students will be messaged when we've graded their work. If we click grade, we can see that it's possible to choose a number out of which the assignment can be graded and it's also possible to create our own scales, which we will look at briefly in another video. If you tick blind marking, then you won't initially be able to see which learner has submitted which piece of work. And marking workflow and allocation are useful when sharing the course with other teachers to divide up, moderate and monitor the progress of grading. But for now, let's just save and return to course and our assignment is ready for our students to submit.